Come to think of it, these two had never recalled each other by their names until now. Jessica hadn't known Cannon's true name. Cannon hadn't called Jessica by her name. By calling someone by their name, people acknowledge the worth of that person's soul. This is why names are sacred. Getting permission to say someone's name means that they have acknowledged your soul. No, that's probably wrong. When father sees me, it reminds me of that other me, the past. The past me. Now, I'm sure that me calling father by his name. However, that probably doesn't mean father would be happy to hear me call him by his name. After all, I am me, and not the Beatrice my father knows well. What can I do to help father? How can I be useful to him? That's the only reason I was born. Hanging her head, Beatrice sat al all alone in the garden, golden land arbor that was next to the rose garden. The scene was watched by the witch of theater going and her Miko as they sat across from each other. How's it going? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a completely different person, right? To be fair, I, I really like this Beato better. Because she does she hasn't killed anyone. That's nice. It may be that, but uh, the rule is that Beato is the, the Beato. However, saying that would be horribly unfair to her. Well, yeah, she's being rejected for the sheer fact that she's not someone else. Compared to the young boy and girl who had found new versions of themselves and called each other by their true names, this witch looked very feeble. The witch knew that she was an image created in the image of the person she once was, was an illusion created in the image of the person she once was. And then she also knew that it would only hurt Battler to try and pretend to be that person. Of course. ジブンはバトラーの役に立つために生まれてきたと。at the very least, Beatrice was once a pure creature who was born for Battler's sake. It was also very clear that in her current feeble state, she does not possess any of the courage or motivation needed to bring about those fearsome serial murders. If so, that means the sinister witch we all know must have been cha must have changed during the thousand years since her birth. <laughs> Yeah. So the six years that Battler was gone is what in turn made her like that. In other words, the pure Beato transformed into the cruel Beato during those six years that could be called a thousand. So does that mean uh, something bad happened during those six years that made her hate Onichan? Onichan,六軒島は愚か。後ろ見分けの席から抜けてさいるのよ。その変化に、お兄ちゃんは何の関係もない。not necessarily, if he never comes by. That's his sin, not coming back. 
and distancing himself and making, you know, her wait six years a seemingly eternity. Oh, yeah. こちらにおいででしたか。お母ちゃんでもおいでしましょうか。熊沢さん、知りたいことがあります。はいはい、何でしょうか。私はベアトリーチェという名前なんですよね。そうですとも。She's <笑> learning. <笑> Sadly not. I will accept you the way you are. That's not true. お嬢様はお嬢様、ベアトリーチェ様ご自身ですとも。新しくお生まれ変わりになるとき、以前の記憶を失ってしまっただけでございますよ。たとえ記憶をなくされようとも、お嬢様はベアトリーチェ様。親
黄金の魔女 The great witch spread her arms, communicating the others' unbending determination to the brilliant heavens. At that moment, a brilliant light covered the two of them. And before they knew it, they were in a strange study. They sat at the master of these archives. The gray, there sat the master of these archives, the great old witch and her Miko. Virgilia gave a deep and elegant bow. And you. Hopefully she won't get lost. お願いします。あんたのなろうとしているベアトリーチェは彼女なりに何かを苦しんでいたわ。少なくとも今のあなたはその何かから解き放たれている。自らその枷を取り戻すために旅に出るの。私は黄金の魔女になりたいんです。それが私の生まれてきた理由です。彼女の煉獄をめぐる旅が快適であるよ。そして保護が与えられるよう無限と有限の魔女プブリウスワルギリアマロの名において養成します。あ、えっと感激
かつてのベアトリーチェがどのような人物だったかを知るだろうしかしそこから何を得られるかはそなたが決めるがよい書庫にとどまるも自由立ち去るも自由再び戻ることさえも自由だその対価として私はそなたを感激する感激とは要するに好きにしていいって意味よあ,ありがとうございます青木さんえっとフェザリーヌって呼ぶと喜ぶわよあ,ありがとうございますフェザリーヌ様After being welcomed by the,、uh, by, in by Featherine, Beato left on a journey to know herself. The tale connected the old tale with the new one, it wove them together. The thousand year old tale about her return. Return to its starting point, becoming a snake eating its own tail. The ring of that snake began slowly, bit by bit, to turn into the shape of a small island floating on the sea. That island was Rokinjima. Thousand years of the witch born on this island were tied to this island. Was it a thousand years or six, just six? Did this tale start even further back into the past? Beatrice went out on a journey to find herself. The wind had been strengthening since a while back. The breaking waves had been, have grown fierce. The ferry boats probably wouldn't be coming for a while now. The crashing thunder told that the island had been sealed off from the outside world. A thick rain poured down, mocking the fools outdoors who had ru to rush pathetically to find shelter. No longer would anyone be able to leave this island, and no longer would anyone be able to reach this island. No one else, no one unless blessed with a miracle. There was another flash of lightning. The re redness of all who saw it were filled with white. As that white faded away, an eerie shadow pulled itself up amidst the raging waves of the beach. Please strike her down. As though suddenly remembering it, caught violently several times. The filthy spitting out of the water, filthily spitting out the seawater head that had filled its stomach. She then tore apart the Velcro on her life jacket and threw down the reason she had been able to float here without so much as a thank you. Good. Kick her in the shin. Can a bolt of lightning please come down and strike her down? Kick her while she's down.
The news about the drifter, Fruto Erica, quickly spread across Rokinjima. Uh, she fell from the pleasure boat Eternal May 2. Blah, 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 blah. Managed to drift down the island. Thing over here? No. Erica had been politely entertained, and it was decided that she would be treated as a guest until the typhoon passed. In the dining hall, Gota's wonderful dinner had ended, and everyone was relaxing and enjoying some after-dinner coffee and cheese. Apparently, Battler was a bit relieved that Erica had come and turned into a good scapegoat. It drove away some of the attention he'd, he'd been getting piled, uh, pi piled well on him for finally coming back after six years. In fact, she turned out to be very talkative. When the conversation turned to a sophisticated discussion on the mystery of the mystery genre, even the adults were drawn in. She was apparently so well versed that even Nanjo, who had vast knowledge of the subject, was impressed. ご安心を。どんな難事件であっても解決してお見せしますので。それが探偵の務めです。頼もしいじゃないか。むしろ あなた、不謹慎です。まあ、人間のミステリーの歴史なんてほんの既に累計化されているどれかのトリックを形を変えただけにすぎないのですから。まあ、それでもミステリーが読み物として現代でも通用するのは古典も六寸法読まない付け焼き場の辞書マニアが自分の不勉強ゆえに知らない古典トリックを
But Erica knew the from the previous game that Battler was actually quite an avid reader. So his words felt like more of a challenge. <laughs> Picking up that Erica's arrogant statement uh, had made the atmosphere a little more tense, George smoothly changed the subject. By now, it was more clear than uh, it was more than clear that she wasn't the cute guest she had appeared to be. Maria pulled a book out of her bag that had quizzes and puzzles written on it, and had started reading them to everyone. It might have looked as though it would become a peaceful quiz party, but of course, that isn't what happened. Let me guess, someone has to show how intelligent they are. In credit to all her big talking, Erica managed an impressive radio ratio of correct and immediate answers. Erica took complete control. Her bragging began to escalate more and more. Can someone just throw her outside? George silently regretted the choice he had made when changing the subject. The question, how many matches would you need for a tournament with 117s, was answered instantly by Erica. Okay. Yeah. Well, since it's always two teams going against each other, yes, that is how it works. And if it, and it also depends if it's a battle, uh... Elimination tournament or not. Well, because if you always look, the final is always two teams and it's one match. And that's just how it is. That's always the final, so it's always going to be one less. Yeah, maybe you should go shut the fuck up. <laughs> Here's this riddle. He was actually. Kenzo was actually born in China. I fucking lied to her. Oh, I got it. Make her just spin in circles constantly. Oh, yeah, I lied to you. He wasn't actually born in China. Oh, God, that would be so fun to do. Oh, can I please do that for the epitaph? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Please tell me how intelligent you are. You're not one if I break your fucking neck. The cousins all thought about the answers to the questions, but Erica always answered first. Rosa thought that it was a bit rude for Erica to say the answers out loud while people were thinking instead of keeping them to herself. But since Erica was a guest, Rosa decided against mentioning it. In truth, Erica was perfectly aware of this when she answered the questions instantly. Each time she would grin broadly as though saying, You are still haven't solved it. such an easy problem. Huh. Yeah, if you're so above it, why are you trying to act superior? Yo, 